Welcome to the year 2000 edition of the Living Christmas Tree. My name is Rob Strauss, and I'm the associate pastor here at Calvary Bible Church, and we are glad that you are here. I would be interested to see how many are here for the very first time. Could you raise your hand? The very first time. Well, welcome. We are glad that you are here. 
And I think and I hope and pray that you will say the same at the end of the program. This is the second year that we've been here in this facility with the great sight lines and the comfortable chairs. And this year we got a special deal on the tickets. We got some leftover ballots from Florida that we used. <laughs> and so they've been really helpful. And I, I don't know if you know this, but all seven performances have been sold out. And uh, this, this afternoon, some were trying to get in with some absentee ballots, and uh, we, we had to say, sorry, no way. But we are really glad that you are here. Can I mention a few things that would be helpful to you and to the performers tonight? Number one, we, would, we need to keep the aisles clear, so please don't put any purses or anything that would uh, get in the way. People will be coming in and out during the entire presentation. Also, if you could refrain from it using any flash photography. And to, uh, this afternoon, the presentation has two understudies in the part of Joseph and Mary. Jo Joseph is played by Adam Yates, and Mary is played by Nicole Strauss. Also, this presentation is being professionally videotaped. And if you would like to receive a copy, a video copy, uh, you may order that in the uh, table in the lobby as you leave, and they will be a very excellent uh, production, and uh, it's something that you may give as a gift or keep as a reminder of this evening. So please remember that. Also, there may be some congestion on the roadway as you leave. Most people are aware of our Oak Ridge exit. We also have a southern exit out off the front parking lot that, exist, that exits to uh, Rock Ledge Lane, which then goes to Tuller Road. So if it gets a little uh, bit uh, heavy with traffic at the completion uh, this afternoon, uh, please use both exits. Also, in the program, you have a comment card. This is it. We would like to hear from you. Each year, we try to do a better job than the year before. And a lot of that comes from comments and suggestions from you. And so please use that. Also, the choir members, the cast, the ushers, everyone involved in this production really want this to be a blessing to you. And uh, so if you have received some kind of spiritual blessing from being here, it would also be good to indicate that too on the cards. Well, the Living Christmas Tree 2000 is here. The presentation is entitled, All is Calm, All is Bright, and we hope that this presentation will really truly be a blessing to you all.
is calm and all is bright no more darkness and no Listen carefully and do not be afraid, for we bring you an astounding story of good news. For those who have ears to hear, joy will be the song. For those that have eyes to see, the light will be so bright, yet it will not blind. For those who seek, you will find. And for those who wander, a path will be revealed. For those who hope, you are about to encounter more than you ever thought possible. We do not diminish the harsh re reality nor the intensity of the darkness. Rather, we magnify the wonder and the glory of His light. The desert days of stumbling in the dark are over. In the midst of paralyzing turmoil. In the deepest shadows of fear. In the confusing roar of frightening voices. Listen, until that morning when a stone will roll away from an empty tomb, you are about to hear the greatest shout of victory the world has ever known. You are about to hear the voice of God Almighty, the Lion of Judah. Listen as the Ancient of Days speaks to us. All is calm, all is bright. And so, come, Prepare the way of the Lord.
Well, another long trip into town for water. And what do we get for it? Enough water to last until tomorrow, and then we make the trip again. Every day, it's the same routine. Uh, not really, Benjamin. Uh, yesterday, it took us a lot longer to get here. Only because we had to round up some missing sheep along the way. The trip to town was the same. <laughs> That's all right with me. What's all right with you? The trip into town. I love to see what's going on here in the marketplace. It's the same old thing. <laughs> Every day, Benjamin, is a little bit different from the last day. How? Well, take a look over there. There's Sarah. Today she's trying to buy pots to put her flour in. But yesterday she was over here haggling with a weaver. And there's Samuel. Yesterday he was selling some meat in his stall, but today he's trying to buy garments for his five daughters. It's still the same old thing. Just the activities change. <laughs> I'd just soon to be back in the fields, away from all this hustle and bustle. Well, I'll tell you, there's only so many people here because of the Roman census. The Roman census? Yes, the census, to tax us more. May God smite them with a plague. <laughs> Someday, I hope, the Lord takes us away from taxes. <laughs> well, maybe someday people will see the evils of tax collection, but not now. Tax collectors. We ought to kill every one of them. Hey, shh. You're going to get us in trouble. Uh. Now listen, we need to finish filling up our skins here and then get out of here because who knows what, what kind of trouble the flock is in by now. Same as ever. Some sheep will run off. Other sheep will find a cool place and lie down and go to sleep. Other sheep will roam around looking for something new to eat. That's sheep. That's what sheep do. We still need to get out of here, so let's get going. Well, goodbye, fair Bethlehem, until tomorrow. You speak as if Bethlehem were a person. Well, it's not a person, but... It's alive with activity, and, you know, I feel new changes coming on the horizon. Uh, Bethlehem may get bigger, but it's still Bethlehem. <laughs> Nothing's ever happened around here, and it never will. We'll see, my friend. We will see. The heart of the Father is seen so clearly in the coming of his Son. The advent of heaven's prince was carried out exactly as God intended it to be. How like him to come just as he said he would. How like us to miss all the clues. How like him to reach to us. How like us to not receive him. How like him to give up everything. How like us to hold on to anything. Yet, regardless of how much we didn't see, how much we didn't understand, how much we didn't believe, angels were about to sing and shepherds were about to rejoice. And nothing would ever be the same again. Sing glory, 
seen the stars this bright. God, don't you understand? I got to get up and go to work in the fields in the morning. What's that? Singing? Who in the world would want to be singing at this hour of the night? You must get up. You won't believe what's going on out there. Well, the, somebody's having a party of some sort. <laughs> They're singing along with this light. I can't even get any sleep. No. And I got to have my sleep or I'll be a grouch tomorrow. Yeah. I know, I know. But please, get up. You must get up. Why? You won't believe it. It's a star... It's the brightest star I've ever seen shining above Bethlehem. I know. I was just telling you about it. That's what's keeping me awake. Yeah. Well, I, you wouldn't believe it. The singing. It's by angels. Now, there you go again. <sighs> Your imagination's getting the best of you. You hear the people in town. They've come here to be counted by the senses. And they're drinking too much wine. No, no. You must get up. You went. The singing is by angels, and the and the star, it's it's like it's shining from heaven itself. Get up. Go without me. No, not this time, Benjamin. Now come on. Get up. You're not gonna let me sleep, are you? No. Now, tomorrow. When we make our daily trip into the city, don't complain to me when you get tired. I won't, I won't. Now get up. I'm staying here. Ben! I'll join you later after I get some sleep. All right, fine, but it's your loss. Yes? Just as God had instructed, angels appear before lowly shepherds with a personal invitation to an audience with the Holy Child. Kings, however, wise enough to read the celestial signs on display in the heavens, were required to leave the comfort of their kingdoms. These royal seekers set out on a lengthy and arduous journey that would lead them west to a little town in the Judean hills to worship Earth's only true sovereign.
the Magi were royalty. They knew they were in need of a king. They are not remembered today for their regal accomplishments. They're remembered for being wise enough to be seekers. The great news of Christmas is that seekers find. And the reality of coming into his presence is so much greater than the dream of the quest. When we needed a king, God provided the one that would rule over all kings.
Hey, Jack, hold up, hold up a minute. I don't think this is such a good idea. These people have been through a lot, and it's not right for us to just barge in on them. You said yourself last night that this place was full of angels. Well, they got to get some sleep. <laughs> they got to be tired. Listen, this place was filled with angels last night, and you would have saw them too if you'd only come when I told you to come. I still say your imagination's getting the best of you, but I had some sleep. And that's more important than seeing imaginary angels. Now, come on. Let's go. Come on. This be... Excuse me. Hello. Hi. My name is Zacchaeus, and that's my friend Benjamin over there. And oh, I was watching what happened last night. Did, can you allow us to meet you? Sure, that was quite a glorious night, wasn't it? Oh, I'll say. Angels singing the praises of God. Oh, I know. Angels? Yes, thousands of them. It was amazing. Real angels? Fear not, we come from heaven, angels? Those are the ones. Didn't you see them here with your friend? No, he didn't see them because he was sleeping. Oh, I tried to get him up, but he wouldn't come. He can be quite stubborn sometimes. Well, you sure missed a glorious night. Tell me, what went on here and why did it happen? Well, that's a long and complicated story. And the best way I can think of to explain it is for you to come and see the child of God. So this is the baby that caused all this fuss? Yes. But he's not just any baby. His name is Jesus. He is God's son and is Christ the Lord. Come closer. Look into his face. Then you can see him for who he really is. This is the Messiah? Yes. He has finally come to us. This is so hard to believe. It's very hard to understand. In fact, God had to help me understand, too. For when Mary first became a child, I couldn't believe it. I thought she had betrayed me, and I was so angry. But God sent an angel, and he told me who this baby really was. And from that time on, I've done all that I can to prepare for the birth of Jesus. Well, tell me, why Bethlehem? Couldn't you have just had this baby at home? Of course. But the census came. We really had no choice. At first, I was so reluctant to come. But then I remember the prophecy says that the child will come from the city of David. So this is our long-awaited Messiah. Yes. Well, this, this is amazing. Yes. Tell me, how does it feel? I, I mean, knowing who, who he is. Well, I've had nine long months to ponder this. I've been visited by an angel, and I've had many long talks with God in my prayers. You see, I know the Lord is using me for this, and I am blessed to be the mother of his son. Weren't you frightened? Anxious. Perhaps, but the Lord has helped me with any fear that I had. You see, I know why he is here. All was calm, and because of their trust in God's promises, all was bright. For Mary and Joseph, the long, difficult journey from Nazareth was over. They had been chosen to love and nurture God's child as their own. They believed all that they were able to comprehend and accepted all that they could not understand. Yet, from the moment the baby's cry pierced the night, a new journey had begun. No one had ever been asked to walk the path that would be required of this young couple.
someday when this night is over and the star has faded and the angels fly I will look at you of the first night when I heard you cry Someday you'll take your tiny fingers and with just a touch You'll cause the blind to see Someday You will walk with strangers But tonight I'll rock you Stay a while with me They will call you Savior, hope of all the people, light and life divine, and someday you will speak the the hearts of many as you now touch mine yes my child someday you will speak in love and wisdom prison doors will open You will walk among us, but tonight I'll rock you. Stay a while with me. But tonight, let me rock you. Just stay a while with me. Money. That's the bottom line. If I had money, she wouldn't be in a place like this tonight. She'd be snuggled up in some warm sheets, and I'd be dozing off in a chair, watching her and the baby sleep. I could have had someone here to comfort her, but instead, she just had me. All thumbs, unless there's a hammer in my hand. I mean, there I was, watching her, trying to reassure her, and all the while, my heart was beating so hard, I thought it would fall into my stomach. 
He's coming into the world. Money. That's what it would take. But what have I got? An honest job that can't even make her comfortable at a time like this. I wanted to get her nice things. I thought at least I could get her a clean room. I married her and I was broke. I worked my fingers raw. I broke my back getting ready for this baby. Then something like this comes along and takes it all away. Travel expenses to Bethlehem. Who would have thought of that? I know if I'd had some money, but one look at these dirty, calloused hands, and he knew exactly what he'd get out of the deal. There goes the door, right in my face. Mary, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it would happen like this. My God, what does this all mean? But while she screamed and cried, I was very afraid. How could you let this happen? Are you testing us? What are you trying to do? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm getting him out of that filthy manger, that's what. A king's life shouldn't start out in a food trough. He was promised a throne. The least I can do is make him a cradle. Look, look off at all those people in that inn. Why didn't you tell any of them? Who do you tell? Shepherds. They come trundling in here, babbling about angels and offering us goat cheese. <laughs> come on, who's going to believe them? The story of the birth of God's son is going to die out around a campfire in a field somewhere. No one's ever going to know. Huh. Maybe that's good. But what would people do if they found out anyway? They'd laugh at him, that's what. And he'd wonder why I couldn't have done any better for him. With a beginning like this, I don't know what you have planned. What's on your mind? Will they listen to him? Will they give him a better reception than this? If people couldn't find room for a baby in the middle of the night, what will they do when they find out he's the Son of God? Yeah.
God knew what would be required of his son. This innocent infant would one day face all the conflict we could never survive so that we might partake of his peace. Peace, not the peace the world knew, his peace. Peace that would manifest itself in goodwill to all. In joy to a sorrowful world. In assurance to those in fear. Do not be afraid. God is here. Emmanuel has come. So much proclaimed on such a silent night. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright. day it's the same old thing hike into town for water hike back to the flock then do it again nothing ever changes oh come on Benjamin I can't believe you're saying that after what we saw and witnessed a couple days ago uh, there's no way our lives are ever gonna be the same again 
The Messiah is here. And the world, it's about to change forever. Peace on earth. It's real. How can this baby bring peace on earth? I don't have to know how. The scripture just says he will. Well, you believe it because you saw it firsthand. And I've seen it, although I still can't believe it. <clears throat> how will others who, who weren't here ever believe that he really is who he says he is? I'm sure that he will make himself known. I just have to believe it myself. You know, there'll be generations will never see him as we have. It will be so hard for them to believe that all of this ever happened. Well, this is true, my friend. I, I agree with you, but <clears throat> the Lord is at hand and peace on earth it's here. Peace on earth. Now that will be a very good thing. It's getting dark. We better get back to the sheep. Some will have wandered off. <laughs> That's right. Let's go. Let's go. Peace on earth can only be accomplished as we live out the teachings of the Prince of Peace. Peace on earth was the promise of the angels on that holiest of nights. It was a promise that surpassed the absence of conflict. It was grounded in the presence of God. While we long for peace on earth, we may miss the astounding news that peace has come. One by one, we are invited to enter a kingdom where peace is only surpassed by praise, where the temporal gives way to the eternal, and where sorrow is overcome by joy. This was the blessed hope of the ancients. This is the assurance of the present. Two millennia have passed since the promise of Bethlehem. And as a new millennium begins, we continue to wait on the Lord. As we celebrate the miracle of the Incarnation, we also live in joyous expectation of His imminent second advent. It is not ours to know the day and the hour, but this we proclaim. Just as surely as He came to us in Bethlehem, He will fulfill His promise and return for His own. Remember the words of Peter the Rock, the disciple chosen of Christ to secure the foundations of the church. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. If a moment is like a thousand years, a few moments ago, he came to love, to heal, and to calm our fears, and to save us by His name. He had promised to come to redeem all His own. We just didn't know how. like a thousand years in a moment he'll come
face the unfolding his endless design immortal invincible plans he has shaped in his matchless rhythm and rhyme we cannot grow weary Time on me all to display. The choir has just sung it, and the Bible is clear. Jesus Christ is coming again. He will return. And if he is coming again, that means that he came the first time. And the story has been told very clearly tonight. He came as a babe. He came as the Son of God. He came as the Son of Mary the God-man. It is the mystery of the incarnation. Jesus came because mankind in his sin was separated from God. And Jesus Christ came, lived among us, and he went to the cross, and there he paid the penalty that was due us that we owed and he took it upon himself and he paid it once and for all and it is by God's grace and it is the gift of God that we believe him and we trust him and by doing so we receive the forgiveness of sins eternal life heaven itself it is God's gift there's not one of us here that is able to earn or win God's favor. All of us have sinned, and it is only because of God and His grace. And I know that there are there those here tonight that have received the gift of salvation, and you have experienced God's grace in your life, and you know and experience that inner peace of being right with God. 
I may ter- put it in these terms that's been sung tonight, that all is calm with you. And you know the hope you have for the future when Christ comes again. And I may put it in these terms, that all is bright. But I know that there are those here tonight that even though on the outside things seem to be going well and you seem to have your act all together, that on the inside you may not be able to say that all is calm with you because there is a restlessness in your soul and you know that there is something that is separating you from God. Perhaps you're here tonight and the things on the outside, the outward man, are falling apart. And there's no pretense that you have your act together. And even so, the inside is still raging that all is not calm. And you hear the message that it is by grace and anyone can receive that and you see you seem to think that that is just a pipe dream that it's not possible for you let me be very clear to you God loves you and God knows all about you there is nothing that he does not know and that he is not aware of and that's why he sent Jesus I don't know how the message could be any more clear tonight that anyone who receives Jesus will receive forgiveness of sin. But there are those who, for whatever reason, fail to leave room in their heart for him. We have been praying for you that perhaps tonight you would receive that gift. And if that is your intention, that is your desire, you may want to pray something along with me, and you can pray quietly in your heart. So we pray together. Dear God, I know that I am not at peace with you. I have done wrong and I have sinned and there's a restlessness within. But I do believe that Jesus Christ came, that he is the Son of God. And I do believe that he died on the cross and he paid the penalty for my sin. I believe him and I trust him with my life. And Lord, I thank you for the forgiveness of sins. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the peace and for the hope and for the Savior. In whose name I pray, amen. If you prayed along with me tonight, I am so glad. I'd love to know about it. You may want to indicate indicate something on the comment card. And I promise you, I will pray for you. I'd like to conclude my remarks this evening by saying again that we really want to bless you. I'm glad that you are here. The choir wants to bless you, and they will sing a blessing to you in the conclusion of the presentation. But if you would allow me, I would like to give you a personal blessing right now because I know that in a crowd this size, There are also those here that have never heard someone pray for them specifically. They have never heard someone ask God to bless them. And I would like to do that for you right now. And I would like to do that by having you look at me, every head turned toward me, every eye upon me, as I ask God to bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. May the Lord bless your family. May the Lord comfort those who grieve the loss of a loved one during this holiday season. May the Lord give health to your bodies. And may he bring encouragement to your souls. 
And may he renew your mind with strength and truth and love. And may he bless you by having you experience this as the best Christmas ever, all because of his grace and his gift in Jesus. Amen. In the fullness of time, the light miraculously appeared. And that light that appeared in Bethlehem will return in all his brilliant glory at any moment. All is calm, all is bright. Rejoice in the promise. Through the desert, prepare the way. O'er the mountains, prepare the way. In the valleys, prepare the way. For the coming of the King.
you all for coming and Merry Christmas.